Oh, uh, nah. This is one of those scenarios where it is fully justified in my books. You crash out. <laughs> I don't give a what anybody says, bro. I don't. Yeah, right there. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, it is. He's not even lying about that. He is on bond. Bond and all, I ain't scared. I ain't no coward. You think you can take me? Yep. Let's go back in the building while I don't go to jail. Yeah. How do I even begin to describe this to y'all? Let me put you guys into this scenario. How would you react if you got a call, a phone call, saying that your daughter is in a room with a bunch of people and a bunch of guys about to quote unquote get a train rain on her? I <laughs> How would you react? How would you, what would you do? I'm being so serious. What would you do? Let me know in the comments because that is supposedly what we're about to take a look at. So I haven't seen this, but I, this is one of those scenarios where it is fully justified in my books. You crash out. <laughs> I don't give a shit what anybody says, bro. That's not happening. With, bro, as long as I, the father, am alive, that's not happening, bro. That is not going to happen on my watch. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. so with that being said yeah that's exactly what we're taking a look at today the description says that the father pulled up with a gun so hey i am extremely intrigued and i got a bunch of other clips as well so this is going to be a good video so sit back relax and just enjoy this one i can tell that this is going to be a good one so and also to all of y'all that are new here watching this for the first time listen my boy we're on a come up and we're on a crazy summer marathon right now i was gone all last year but listen we're on the summer marathon so all you're gonna get from me is some crazy back to back to back to back videos every day god willing so if that sounds good sub up and join us let's take a look at this bro <laughs> Oh, nah. You can listen, you can just tell, like, I know they're going to be blurred for y'all because they're just not dressed modest, bro. She got, basically, they're dressed, I'm talking about her, the daughter of this dude, and the other girl right there holding the door open, I think. They're dressed like bops, if you get what I'm trying to say, bro. They're just, you can tell exactly where that, uh gathering was going you can tell that this this is actually what was about to happen and if this father hadn't you know he, if he didn't come it he probably would have found his his daughter on um in a situation that is unredeemable i'll say that i never thought i'd see anything like this bro seriously let me run that back w dad that is a w dad i don't care what anybody says that is not an overreaction at all that's actually being restraints that is being extremely restraints and i know listen i don't got no kids bro and i'm sure a lot of y'all don't either so we don't know how it truly feels like to be in a situation like this but even us and even like bro anybody with a mind Anybody that actually cares about their kids and actually, bro, you fully understand exactly where he's coming from. And I hope y'all realize that he's being restrained. He's being very, very restrained, bro. He has extreme self-control. I'll tell you that because I can't imagine how he knew about this. Did somebody text him? Did somebody call him? And if so, imagine what that text or call was like. <laughs> Like, how do you even describe this shit to my boy, bro? You're like, hey, man, um, I got some bad news, bro. But uh, your daughter is about to, 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 you know, you said what? About to do what? And then he pulls up with the gun, as y'all clearly saw right there, man. I mean, luckily. And by the way, like we're watching a near disaster moment right here because it was very close to escalating to, like I said, bro, basically she was about to go crazy with everybody in that goddamn room. But luckily, luckily for the father, luckily for her, and luckily for all these guys involved, he arrived and he pulled up before anything could happen. He actually was able to protect his daughter. And and this is one of my biggest fears, man, Um, because actually not. No, it's not. But it is something that I can definitely advise y'all on, especially those of y'all, the old heads that watch me, because I know I got a few of y'all that watch me, bro. I'm being so serious when I tell you this, man. Social media is literally a disaster and a disease. It's like a cancer that will brainwash and brain rot either your girl, either your children, 
whoever it is, is if you don't control it, basically, right? I'm not saying you should ban your goddamn wife and kids from being on social media. Although if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But what I am saying is you really need to be on top of all of that because if you don't have the eye to realize when something like this is happening, if you don't get the call where somebody's warning you of this, bro, you will probably never know what your kids are up to because of the shit they see on the internet, because of who influences them on the internet. It's real, y'all. We live in a different age. It's not like it was 10 years ago. We are in a different age. This shit, everybody has a phone now. And that is literally, the phone is literally like a, a another body part. It's like another organ. It's a part of everybody now. Everybody has a goddamn phone. So what I'm saying is if you got kids, bro, don't give them no phone in sixth grade. Like who you are a reach. You can go to jail if you give them a phone at that young of an age because you're basically asking for them to be corrupted. But that's my point, bro. Just especially if you got daughters, protect them, bro. Protect them. It's your duty. I'm not trying to give you all too much of a lesson here, but this is exactly what could happen. I'm, I'm being so real because y'all got to understand that at that young age, it is super easy for her to get convinced for her to get tricked for her to whatever you want to put the label bro it is so easy it is so easy you won't even believe how easy it is so that's why you got to protect all the girls in your life bro and i gotta say props to him he did the right thing and he actually saved her hopefully at least i think so maybe hopefully she doesn't do this shit again but everybody else was spared because fortunately he actually showed up before anything could happen so that's a crazy way to start the video, man. But um, y'all can let me know what y'all think about that. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our second video, which is something about a racist cracker boy prank gone wrong. Let's see. You hear me them there playing cards there, cracker boy? Uh. You be quiet, Henry. <laughs> Ma'am, I just need him to hand him to me now. Why? Because I see it, so boy. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, boy? Uh uh, Stevie, don't start. What's wrong with him, man? You want he take this no, shit? No, don't start. Well, that's good, man. I'm on bond, and you gonna try hey, me in here? Yeah. I'm on bond. Why you wanna try me? Nah, I think I think that's an ankle monitor, right? I don't. Yeah, right there. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, it is. He's not even lying about that. He is on bond. Hey, it looks like uh, <laughs> Grandpa right here has. He's not new to fighting, and he's not scared of you at all, bro. Let's see how this plays out. Hold on. Why you want to try man, 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 I'm on board for fight now. I don't want to sit in that gym. Man, man, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. This is a YouTuber. Uh, you, I don't do YouTube. This I don't text and nothing. Shit out of me, man. So you <laughs> picking with the white? You picking on the right white boy? I'm on shit. Bond and I, I ain't scared. I ain't no coward. I, I, you I, think you can take me? Yeah. Let's go back in the building while I don't go to jail. No, Come on. Follow me. Come on. We thought when I'm bond, I've been attacked your ass six times by now. No. You won't believe yeah, that. Um. <laughs> you know, <laughs> talking shit, walking up on me. You're doing a prank, though. It's, it's a prank. 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 Y'all gonna get fucking yeah. hurt walking up on somebody yeah, one day with that YouTube. Oh, you that bad, too? Shit. What you gonna stop me? See. This isn't like my last video. Now, y'all know my last video. That's totally different. That's not a prank. That's literally assault and harassing somebody. In this case, I could say this is a prank. And it was kind of funny. But at the same time, y'all got to understand that if you decide to do this, if you decide to be a prankster, if you decide to be whatever you want to put the label on it, right? Influencer, not, not even influencer, bro. Um, Just a prankster. If you decide to do this shit, you got to understand that this is a part of the game, right? Some people don't see and they don't care what you have to say. It is not a prank to them. They don't, it's not funny. They don't see it as sweet. They don't see it as a joke. They don't, bro, they don't see it for what it is, especially the older ones, right? Sometimes you might find a cool person who will laugh with you and just understand that it's a prank. That's cool. You'll get a good video out of that. But in these situations, bro, you got to understand that you are at the end of the day in the wrong because you approached them. But, you know, it's, it's a part of what happens. Some people just don't find this shit funny at all and some people maybe their egos are through the roof maybe they just they've been through some shit beforehand maybe they just don't like people joking with them some people i'm not saying i agree with them but some people will literally crash out over a simple prank because they take it seriously so you got to understand that that's just a part of what comes with it right so you walking up off my my i need your husband to give you them cards right now you good bro Boy. You have a good day. Boy, hell, I got you, boy. Come on, now, man. 
Nah, props to Grandpa, bro. Um, he stood he stood up for himself. I mean, what can I say? I, I'm not gonna. Say, he did nothing wrong in this interaction. He had the right to. Hey, he could find it funny. It could be a good video. He could find it like this, where it's not funny at all. Find it disrespectful. It is disrespectful. But there it is. I mean, that's just a reaction, right? He has every right to react this way, bro. If he didn't find it funny, he didn't find it funny. What can you say? What can you even do about this? nothing at all bro you're the one that pranked them so you gotta just eat this to the face and with that being said y'all can let me know what y'all think about so actually go ahead let me know in the comments what y'all think about this bro and then i'm gonna go ahead and move on to our very last video which is something about a walmart worker having a breakdown and calls out gen z for being lazy I cannot stand how the news has been dogging Gen Z and calling them lazy for not wanting to work a 9 to 5 for the rest of their lives. Let me put it in perspective for everybody who's a little confused here, okay? I work five days out of the week, 40 hours a week, okay? I do not make enough to live on my own. I would not make enough to pay rent, water, electric, and eat all by myself. I would not be capable of doing that. 20 years ago when you were getting started, you could live on your own. 20 years ago when you first started, you were able to do everything that I am now struggling to do. Let me add another perspective here. You've been working for 20 years. You have 20 years of working experience behind your belt. You have 20 years of experience in a career that has allowed you to gain raises, to get more money, to profit you in an economy that you created. You can sit here and you can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but I've been working my tail end off just to barely make it by. And respectfully, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I don't want to work my tail end off, wasting all of my life working just to barely be able to pay my bills. And that is what you created, not Gen Z. We're just here getting started. You've been doing it for the last 20 years. You tell me how it got ruined. We can sit here and we can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but you let the economy turn into what it did. You let it all run to hell and now it's gen z's fault because we don't want to work to fix your mistakes i mean she spoke facts bro when it comes to the reality of younger people including myself i mean that's just the reality of these nine to five jobs right but you gotta understand that what i learned and what is cemented in my mind now is that we live in an extremely unfair cruel world i mean just look at what's happening in gaza right bro you can't <laughs> listen if you look at any of just the sad disastrous videos that come out of gaza and you tr you bro it makes you immediately realize that dog re no matter how messed up this system is you're privileged right and the way i see it unless a collective effort is started to change this for the better for all of us there is no point in complaining about it you gotta the trick is to start something else that has a future for you something that you are passionate about and you can still work these jobs but what i will advise you on is bro just don't don't find yourself working these jobs without a second plan. Don't find yourself working these jobs without a hobby that could potentially uh, explode in the future and you can live off of it. That could potentially be something you enjoy and you can quit your job and do full time. So my best advice to all y'all is to, bro, if you work these jobs, it's fine and you can. And I, I told you, I, I worked one job in my life and I couldn't, bro. Two months and a half, I was out of there, gone. I couldn't, I could not bear it. It was awful. And, and I'm just not a person that likes authority, bro. You're not going to sit here and tell me what the f to do. That's just not me. But here's the thing. Some people are the polar opposite of me. But my best advice is, bro, if you find, if you find yourself feeling like this, if you find yourself just feeling like this, struggling to make it, the best thing we can do is to start something, a hobby, start a side hustle, something else that has a future, right? Something else that grows because your nine to five job is not going to grow. You're going to get stagnant income, stagnant. It just stagnant, like it just a, a direct line. But the other hobby, the, the, the hustle, whatever it is, whatever you're interested in, just look into it, do your research and actually take it seriously and believe in yourself. That second thing that you start, bro, yes, it could start way below. Think of it as a graph, right? Your nine to five is a stagnant line at like 50. Your hobby could start at zero and it's not stagnant. It goes up a little bit, goes down. But at least that second hustle has the potential to pass the stagnant line of your nine to five. If you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? Basically, just start something that has an open future that isn't sealed, and work on that while you work your job. Don't work your job without something else that could potentially, you know, 
work out for you. So that's my advice to her and to anybody that's feeling like this, man, because you got to understand that this world is cruel. It is extremely unfair. It is so unfair, bro. And complaining about it will not change it. The best thing you can do is to just play by the game, right? Learn the game as hard as this shit can be. Learn the game and try to get good at it, bro. Start something new. And the best thing is to just believe in yourself and try shit, bro. That's it try shit, have a job, try shit while having a job. And you never know, bro. Maybe one of the things you try is actually works out for you. So anyways, that's a good way to end off the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And that's pretty much it for me. Take care of yourselves. Appreciate y'all for being here as always. And I'm out.